So uh, before starting the session, let me have a quick round of introduction of mine. So during all the tenure of 4.9 years, I am dealing with a lot of variety of data and then keep on analyzing it. So one interesting problem that business is facing nowadays is Gen Analytics. So today I'm going to discuss that, that problem with the special reference with the telecommunication industries. Now, uh, moving to the introductory slide, how I'm going to cover this session, uh, I will be first explaining what is a churn problem. Why do we need to study and monitor this churn? And then flowchart, how we are going to give a hands-on in this particular session. We are also going to discuss the data set, and then I will show you Python notebook that we have covered for today. Finally, we are going for resulting discussions that have been obtained after learning the machine learning algorithms. And then at the end, I have some kept some time for the Q&A sessions. Now, uh, what is a churn? So churn is a very gen generic statement, I would say, is that I am purchasing some grocery from a retail shop. Now, now when I check the price of the same grocery over the online mediums like Amazon, Flipkart, and then I found those are more, uh, more better money efficient to me. So what I'll do, I'll stop going to that particular retail shop and I'll buy online. So what is happening for that particular retail shop? I'm a churn customer. I am not at all happy to go there because I'm not getting any benefits from there. Similarly, when I talk about churn analytics in telecommunication and other industries, same thing is happening. So when an existing customer stop using the services of a particular company, then and moves to the using the services of another company because he or she will take the service because he is actually taking that means there is a high chances that there is a need of taking it further also. So that's a churn. Now what happens because of this churn is it impacts my revenues. Also, if I talk about the industry, if my revenues are decreased, definitely my share market would also be decreased. And what would be the worst scenario if my business is going on because of this churn? It can add to the uh, layoffs as well. And lastly, I have written that writes the brand value. So uh, um, in, in the telecommunications, we have observed that in the recent year, many of the um, new new organizations which are offering the better plans in terms of the cost and the data mobile coverage so those brands are now many of the many of the customers have ported their plans into that those particular plans those particular brands so my brand value is getting deteriorating so that's how crucial is churn if we talk about it. moving to the next slide what are the impacts on the various industries? I mean, in this particular point is I have jotted down few of the industries where we can see churn is making a huge amount of impact. That is gaming, telecommunications, shopping malls, banks. Shopping malls is highly impacted because of this online uh, shopping platforms if we see. Then banks, when people are moving from one bank to another if they are offering the better rate of interest in terms of the FDs and the other schemes as well. Hotels and restaurants, tourism and restaurants. And then uh, what could be the reason of church? I am pausing here for a moment. So I want you people to answer so that I can see that whether you are getting the meaning of churn or not. Any answers? Better services at low low cost, exactly. I'm expecting some more, more offers. Yeah. Sales on offers or discounts, yes. I think we are going in the right direction. All right, perfect. And now uh, moving forward. Now here is a flow chart that I would be taking you um, as a flow of this session. How I'm going to talk you in terms of the data science. Uh, so this was the generic statement that I have made. Uh, this flow chart is, says that uh, how I'm going to begin up with the hands-on and then how we are actually studying in terms of the analytics. So data set procurement and understanding, and then we go for data enrichment and preparation. So let me explain first two points here. Uh, now, uh, for, uh, for any of the industry, if I 
would say data set procurement in the real time would be a different process and altogether it would be a difficult task as well because we need to get the data from the various sources like someone is holding the data on the clouds and somewhere it's a, a manual storage that needs to be digitalized to analyze the data or sometimes it's in a server so we need to come up with the data set that actually contains all the features all the features which help me to analyze for the churn but uh, for this part for this particular session i'm going to show you the pipeline the python code with a standard data set that i will also discuss so this standard data set will help you to get an overview of how my chunk data should look like especially with the delpos second step is the data in enrichment and preparation so in the real time scenario if you receive the data then it would be a very messy data so for that particular data you need to enrich it and prepare it so that um, we can make sense out of it thirdly we are going for the exploratory data analysis that is finding out the hidden trends within the data itself so this is a very important step for any of the machine learning pipeline because here we get an idea that uh, how hidden trends are already there so that they should make uh, what is already there in the data uh, that can be value to me like if i say my data set is uh, saying if i am a mobile user i have subscribed a mobile user within a with a, with a brand and i'm happy with it then there are high chances i would be taking the broadband as well so that kind of analysis would be coming from the step 3 that is exploratory data analysis now sometimes it also happens that uh, there is some imbalance in the data set so I think this fourth point will be more clear to you once, I, once I'm going to show you the data. Imbalance in a data set or imbalance in anything is like we are biased towards one or more, uh, one or more class, one or more towards something more. So that is imbalance. So imbalance in a data set or, or in a data science it itself is a research area where we need to think how we can handle the data sets. And finally, we are going to perform some modeling definitely machine learning, deep learning, some stuff like this. And then we are going to evaluate and analyze the results. This, so this is the flow chart that we are going to cover with the Python example a uh, little bit later. So I'm pausing here for a moment. If there are some doubts, uh, post it in a chat so that uh, I may have a look that are we following the correct part or not. I hope people are getting this. So I would like to hear some responses from you. All right, so I can see some questions that are making sense to me uh, from the analytics point of view. I will answer those questions a little bit later. So let's go on further. Now, let me give a brief to you. I'll show you the data. Uh, let me give, give you a brief that uh, the data set that I have used here, what it contains and uh, how is it making sense to our telcos. So we are using here IBM telco churn prediction data set. So it's already there at the Kaggle and uh, you people can have a look. So it is containing 33 columns where these are 33 is like 33 is independent variables and one is the target variable. So there is at the end a churn column that indicates whether the customer leaves with the last month or not. So that last column indicates whether it's a churn or not. And yes and no, these are the two variables if you talk about. No means that clients didn't leave the company last month, while the class yes contains the cl clients that decided to terminate their relationships within the company. So this label yes and no basically is giving me the response whether the customer has shown or not. So this is how my data would look like. So before going ahead with the presentation, I would first like you to show the data with the Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to share my screen in just while. Yeah, thank you. So this is the um, Python notebook that I have prepared for today's session. So it it is a telco churn Excel that that file that I have read, and then within this we can see large number of columns. So my column, my data look like this. So we can see here country, customer ID, count, country, state. These are some columns that I'm going to use for the algorithms. Let me show you these columns by names and try to explain you. So uh, this is a standard data set that we have used here for the 
telecommunication churn prediction analysis. So more or less, if we talk about the churn analytics uh, for the other industries as well, you can correlate this data set with them because uh, this, this would be like varying, the columns would be varying, but try to understand it from the uh, point of view that what all features, what all columns would be helpful for me to analyze this churn. So we can here see that customer ID and then from the location where we can see the churn that is being given by the latitude, longitude. And we are also taking into the consideration the gender, the gender uh, senior citizen who are churning more. So this type of uh, distributions we will also see. And then we'll see dependent. Uh, very important is the tenure months. So this, this is something that uh, people, it has been observed and it's a very real trend also that if I go and buy a plan that is like of two years, or maybe maybe one year, then my probability of churning is less. Then what kind of services I'm taking, whether it's a phone service, multiple lines, internet service, online security, some some services like this, then we have we can observe that we are also using some concepts here like streaming TV, streaming movies, like those which are supporting the OTT that has been also discussed in this uh, data set. Now, very important in terms of the monetary specs, if we see here from 24, whether it's a paperless billing, what are the payment methods, monthly charges, total charges. So these columns again make sense to us in terms to study the churn uh, in the telcos. So if I talk about uh, some another example where churn we are talking about is in the industry like banking. Uh, can you can you people give me what? columns would be there like four or five examples can help me to understand that whether you are able to link this with the churn problem or not so what columns do you think would be important for me when i'm going to study some use case for the banking industry rather than the telcos one yeah account balance more rate of interest interest rate difference exactly gender again type of account wonderful so yes i think we will be to follow it payment method again. All right, so coming back to the presentation, uh, let me take you to, to the other slides. Now, uh, this is the snippet that I've attached here. So yes or no. So if you are able to see column number 28, that is churn label. So churn label here in this particular case in my data set is either yes or no. So this is a target column for me, whether a customer has churned or not. So this is like already given to me in a data set because this is a standard data set that has been given to me. That's why I'm able to have some ground truth over here. There are high chances when there is no variable uh, which is depicting this type of knowledge to me. So in that particular case, we are going to handle this problem in a different way. That would be unsupervised learning for us. So in this particular scenario, we have a label. So I'm going to use supervised learning approach here. So from this distribution, I got an idea that my data set is having a class imbalance problems. Mm -hmm. That is more of the records that is there in the data set is biased towards the yes one and less towards nine. No, that we can see from this pie chart. So this is very important. I need to handle this class imbalance problem. So for that particular thing, I am I have used here SMOT. So SMOT is a approach where it is a synthetic minority old sampling technique. So what I did, uh, I took an original data set with the help of SMOT, which is again in the Python code. I mean Python with the help of Python libraries. I just generated few more samples and then I did the resample so that I can handle this class imbalance problem. Now coming to the next slide. So this is a notebook view. What I have tried to did in the Python notebook, I'll take you through the Python notebook. So the hidden trends which are already there in my data uh, that comes under to finding out those hidden trends and to study about them because they actually help me in taking out the decision what kind of model, machine learning model I have to apply at the later stage. Um, I have written some points. So this, this is, I have done, I'll show you. So I have uh, interrogated the distribution of gender, then uh, distribution of various seniors, distribution of senior citizen and their pattern of churn, churn by contract type, churn and retail distribution, 
so monthly charges map so we can see on a map that uh, from where mm. from which city from which location maximum churn is observed then uh, how payment methods are contributing towards the churn analytics and finally i did some favor for the text analytics uh, that is national language processing for restaurant uh, restaurant one so let's let's go to the notebook and then try to study now what i have done or how this type of problems can be solved so i have just show you the data various columns now from this point onwards i have start enriching the data i have start pre processing the data so that i can apply machine learning model onto it now for that what i did uh, we can see here the combination of categorical and the in and the categorical int as well as the float columns so i need to make them into a format so that is easy to be processed by my machine learning algorithms so i did some pre processing on to it and then i took some statistics out of it like what is my mean of the data what is my standard deviation and then what is there in the 25% of then 75% and 50% max values for all those numerical values now if i look here the last two columns cltv and the churn reason so cltv is very important uh, here it is according to this data set cltv is the customers are the customers who are going to retain for a longer period of time so if you look here higher is the score higher is the customers retention here and uh, last column is the churn reason where we can see some text data on this text data i have applied nlp so that i can find out the trends what is making my customers to move to the another organization for availing the services so this type of approach we can use to analyze the data for the other industries as well so it can be like helpful for us in two reasons maybe in the near future you have to design some solution where you need to find out the churn and um, your manager ask what kind of data you want so definitely um, since you got an idea today that yes this type of data can helpful for me for predicting the churn so more or less with the some research and with some uh, already existing data at your side you can go and just present the columns that yes this type of columns if you could to give to me this type of data if you give to me then i would be in a position where i am going to prepare some uh, solution for the same now if i move down now this is the point where i try to study the relationship among all the variables so this is the correlation i have found out here so it's easy if i am going to show you with this visual so those variables which are highly correlated the values are quite close to one so if you see here total charges in the tenure it's 0.93 that means these 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 have a strong um, relation so if we try to understand and relate it with the real time scenario as well if the charges are pocket friendly and i'm going to go for a tenure which is of good long term duration so this is how we can get an idea from the sleep map that uh, which variables can help me to go in terms of the revenues so similarly if we look here with this with this next code i have tried to study the distribution now studying the distribution in any of the machine learning problem is very important because it helps me to decide how i am going to take my problem or which algorithm i am going to select also uh, also like uh, how my data is there do i need to scale it or not so if we look at here i can see good distributions for the code latitude monthly charges churn score churn values um and then this total charges as well but count and this value this graph is not coming to be that correct. so definitely some scaling is required so that i can bring this data into uh, in a particular scale then i have tried to find out what are the null values so i can see for churn reasons 
maximum null values are there. So I am pausing here for a moment. Let me check whether you guys are having any doubts or not, or whether you are able to follow it. So um, can someone from the moderator team also help me to get this idea? All right. Now, um, since my data contains the numerical values as well as the categorical values, so I am going to segregate both of them because uh, the way to handle both of these values are different. So with the help of this, uh, I have created one variable where I'm going to store only my categorical features and the another one where I'm going to store on only numerical features. Now, uh, the charts, which are again coming into the pipeline, is the distribution of my categorical variables in a, on a very um, clear notion, if I would say. So count, as you can see, count is 1.0 because this is what the count of the records we see. So zip code we can see. Definitely someone has posted on the chat that uh, why are we not excluding zip code and everything. Uh, we have done those changes as well. You will see later in the code. So distribution of gender, as we can see. So there is uh, not much bias in terms of the gender if we see. Um, mostly male and the female distribution is not uh, varying as we have yes and no distributions. So here, this is a pie chart that I have showed in the presentation where I can see the distribution of both yes and no. Now, this is interesting. Now I'm going to uh, give you an insight where I can see the churn is there, but the distribution uh, with the help of both uh, gender. So we, we are studying that uh, how the churn is being impacted I mean, what is the ratio of churn when it comes to the gender? So we can see here, uh, no part, no means uh, not churn. And within that, we can see again, the distribution of male and female. Similarly, for the yes, again, we see the distributions. So it it's, it is it is evident from here that uh, the churning in terms of the uh, gender is almost the same. There is not much difference that we can come out from this data set coming to the churn by the senior citizen. So if we look here, this is somehow not very balanced, if I would say, uh, whether there is a senior citizen or not, we can see uh, the churn distribution accordingly from this type of graphs. So this type of graphs we can do for the EDA purpose to find out the existing prints from the data set. Now here in this particular EDA part, what I have did, I have uh, included the senior citizen first. So if I say there is no senior citizen, I would be able to find out distribution of gender here. So it would be like, I can see here from this particular graph, four things. Number one, what is my churn label? Yes or no. Then uh, if there is no senior citizen, uh, what is my distribution of male and female? Similarly, if there is a senior citizen, what is the distribution of male and female again? So this is giving me a very good insight that the uh, proportion of the senior citizens is less in this particular data set. And whatsoever is the distribution, I can, I can find out the churn is uh, um, less and the detention is more. So coming to the next, EDA that I have done, it is based on the contract type. So as we can see here, the customers whose contract is two years, uh, for them, chances of retention, that is churn label being no is more. So the higher the contract, those are like high value customers and their chances of being retained there is more. Then this is interesting. Uh, if you look at there, this chart shows um, blue is churn and uh, light pink is retain. So if we look here, tenure, um, so tenure, if tenure is very short, like very close to zero, then definitely chances of churn, churn is more. So as evident, we can see here from the graph, the peak is high. But as soon as we move towards more tenure, then the uh, graph starts decreasing, the blue graph. So this is how churn graphs starts decreasing, but 
opposite to is retained starts increasing. So this is how I can see the distribution of tenure with the help of with the help of this uh, churn. Now, uh, so far, what we have covered is like we are trying to identify what all factors are contributing to worse churn. So this is how we are trying to find out the trends from the existing data as well. So I can go to my client, I can go to business and straight away say, if you're going to increase the tenure plans of your customers, definitely the churn probability would be decreasing. So try to uh, try to increase your business, try to offer the discounts or the services in such a way that uh, they they tend to go for some longer plans and then your probability of churn would be decreased and your sales would be increased. So this is how uh, the sales team should make advantage of this kind of results. Coming, coming to the next graph, this is for the monthly charges distribution. Again, we see some similar trend, trend across the chart that we have seen just now. So if we look at here, for the monthly charges between 60 to 120, uh, so we can see how churn increases and then decreases. So similarly, uh, retain. So it's, it's an amalgam of both the things happening here because it, we are focusing on the monthly charge distribution here. So it's a, it's a mixed match distribution that we have observed here. Now, uh, from this, this table, what I have tried to explain is like, if your payment method is bank transfer, credit card, electronic check, or the mail check, what, are, what would be the values of your churn? I mean, uh, this is giving me the values in what particular for what particular payment methods your churn would be more or not. So these values would be, I have explicitly mentioned these values only so that uh, once one people who are studying for the analytics stuff, they should not only able to have a look of for these graphs, but these values should be also explainable to you. For this particular value, for this particular payment method, let me show you the graph where. So this is the graph where we can see the distribution. So we can see for the electronic bank, the distribution is more. And let's try to correlate with these values. So these values are coming like this. Okay. Now, one very um, different uh, analysis would be I, I have plotted here a chart where we can see if I am going to hover it what is happening if the churn score is high so I have set up a threshold here that if my churn score is greater than equal to 50 this churn score is coming from the data itself then what I am doing I am plotting the latitude and the lo longitude that is the location of a particular customer along with the zip code uh, to get from which city the churn is happening. So uh, somebody who has pointed this why not to exclude it. Definitely when I'm going to go for uh, the machine learning model, I'm going to keep it. But for the EDA purpose, I have included this zip code, latitude, longitude, and the city part so that I can um, show you this kind of inferences. So if we hover it, we get a location. The last column, which is the reason, for that I have find out some text so for that text i have just plotted try to understand what is my text containing so for that particular thing i have applied some part of nlp that is uh, the word cloud so if we can see here these are the word clouds but these these are the words that i got from those collection and uh, we can see that people are dissatisfied with the service and some someone has mentioned the attitude as well so support so it might be the case that uh, the customers who were dissatisfied they would have called the call centers and they were not able to get their problems resolved quickly so they have written some comments onto it or we have spoken that um, that uh, somebody from the help desk have noted down. So from that particular thing, uh, these work clouds are being generated. So maybe uh, I can say um, to study the churn in the other organizations as well, if, the, if this feature is not there, but if your 
or uh, organization is getting this type of data where they are recorded recording making comments that how happy or dissatisfied is the customer you can try to analyze that what is the issue so if i see here by looking at it i can find out speed is an issue that i'm not uh, offering a good amount of speed that customer is expecting that could be the potential reason for the churn maybe uh, services i'm not offering that is not that is the another reason and uh, competitor if we can see here so people have mentioned that they are getting some plans better than the one that i am offering so there are there are few competitors of mine so this is how we can getting the inferences from it coming down so more analysis i did uh, so this we this we can see here is a scatter plot so this seems to be a little bit complicated but it's actually showing me the distribution that with my monthly charges how my charge score is looking so if we look at somewhere around the 70 to 120 i can see a dense distribution going on between 40 to 80 so if my monthly the charges are between six, 40 to uh, 60 to 120. Then I can see the churn score is this much. So this is how I'm going to study with this pattern, with this graphs. Now, these type of charts that I have used here, um, it looks to be complicated, but this is like the, I'm trying to plot the relationship among all the variables within the data set. So if you look here, the left-hand side, Left hand side is let's see churn score. Churn score, the second last column. So churn score, I'm trying to study what is the relationship with of uh, zip code with churn score, then latitude, then longitude, then more. This is just a way of visualization which helps me to give the full idea, but it's it, it's not like a, something complicated that we need to spend a lot of time over there. There are a few charts like this where we can see churn score and the churn score. So these are coming to be the same. So this is like the relationship with itself. All right. So before going to the modeling part, I am pausing here for a moment and I would like to see how, how much you people are getting. All right. So, so far what we have covered, I mean, again, going to share my screen. So, so far we have covered some extensive VDN that is finding out all those columns, all those, uh, whether I'm seeing columns or features. So I'm, um, I'm just trying to focus on the fact that all um, factors in, in a business term, I would say that all factors are controlling my churn. So these factors can vary to different types for the different industries uh, for this particular Post that we are talking about. These are few of the columns, a few of the features that can help to churn. But if we talk about the real data, there could be many other things. So this is just an example. But based on this example, you can design a solution for the other problems as well. Now, uh, going to the another part, I'm going for a modeling part now. So my problem is that I am going to classify my customers, whether they have changed churn or not. So this is what I'm going to do. So I am making this problem a classification problem because uh, I am having here the ground truth with the help of churn labels. In case no ground truth is available to you, you can definitely go and make it a clustering problem because in that particular uh, scenario, nothing is, uh, nothing is known to you. Now, if we see here, so I have dropped all those columns which are not making sense to me. And uh, target column I have taken in Y value. Now these columns basically are the categorical columns. So I need to enrich my data once again. I need to convert it into the another form so that it can be processed by machine learning algorithms. So I have done dummy encoding onto it. I have also did some standardization onto the data set. Now I have applied, uh, so this is the stuff I'm showing you. I have results for two types where I have handled the class imbalance problem and where I have not handled the class imbalance problem. So this is first I am showing you where I have not handled the class imbalance problem. So for that, what I have done, I have done number one, uh, segregating of my numerical and the 
categorical features. Then I have applied some encoding onto the categorical features. And then finally, uh, what I have done, I have test and train my split data, apply some standardization onto it. And then I have applied two algorithms. One is XGBoost and then the logistic regression. So what I have observed when I have applied the XGBoost, my accuracy is somewhere close to 66%. But when I have applied logistic regression, my accuracy is somewhere 75%. Person. Now, uh, ideally, XGBoost because that's, that's that's more advanced one and the gradient boosting based uh, algorithms, their accuracy should be more. But in this particular scenario, logistic regression is behaving in a better way. The reason being is um, logistic regression can handle this, uh, handles or give, performs better when there's a class in values problem. And uh, there is there's a maths behind it that uh, it is able to separate the classes in a better way as compared to XGBoost. So that's why the accuracy is more. So to evaluate more, I have plotted this confusion matrix. So whenever there's a classification problem, uh, we go for this confusion matrix. So left-hand side, we see here true labels and right-hand side is a predicted label. So true label is already the churn labels that we have seen in the data. And the predicted one is that that we have observed after applying the logistic regression. So this is how my results look like. But this is first case. Another case is that when I have applied smooth technique to handle the class in balance problem. So the same steps I have done it here also. Split my data set and then standardization. Then because here uh, we can see the number of columns are high after I have done the encoding. So there is something called dimensionality reduction also I did. So dimensionality reduction is like if I say in my data set I'm having 300 columns but my columns are coming some um, repetitive information. So I try to minimize those information, those number of columns to somewhere around 50, 60, or maybe uh, maybe the subset, which can truly just justify all the columns. So I go for PC or some other dimensional reduction techniques. So all my data set, which was expanded, the features that were expanded with the help of PCA, they have transformed into the two attributes only that is containing the same information that all my uh, large number of columns containing. So I, I prepared this kind of data. I did standardization. I applied PCA. I also applied SMOOT. Now I'm good to go to apply logistic regression because from the code above, I got the information that logistic regression is behaving well. So again, I applied it. And this time uh, there is slight improvement in accuracy that is now it has been changed to 76 percent but this data set is not very large so this much of variation in the results we have seen just this results can also be improved if i go for some hyperparameter tuning so this is how uh, it this process and uh, if we look at here these are some visualizations for the training and the test data so if we look here, it's a scatter plot, which is showing the distribution of zero and the one label on the test data set that is after applying the logistic regression, the results that I have obtained. Similarly, I have plotted it for the training set as well. And this is how we have completed this pipeline. Let me go back to the presentation. All right. So this is what I have covered. So this is the summary of what so far I have given a walk, walk through to you. So electronic check medium is the highest journal. Monthly customers are more likely to churn because of no contract terms as they are free to go customers. Maybe they have taken the services just to check whether it's fine or not. So we can observe no online security, no tech support is being given to the customers. That is why they are joining more. And then non-senior citizens are the high joiners. So this is what, or, or maybe some more inferences like this, uh, we can have it from the work that I have 
flow too. So this is just to sum you a few points. So now coming to the question answer sessions. Uh, so someone has mentioned that where are you getting the NLP data? So I just show you the column from where I'm getting the text. And uh, coming to the next question, after PCL, there is a lot of overlap between one and zero. That's normal. Sorry, I'm not getting this question. Okay, now next is, what is the effect of deploying a model trained after smooth? Isn't it changing the distribution of churn versus not churn? Yeah, exactly. So this is something that we are infusing into it. Uh, that is, we are doing with the smooth. But uh, uh, already there is an imbalance that we have seen in the starting of the data. So we need to handle it in some way. So this is one of the approach we have uh, tried to handle it. There are a couple of other approaches as well where you can try to handle it in a different way. I hope I'm making sense to you. Okay, let me go for some other questions. Uh, someone has mentioned this. Um, can you please explain the necessity of NLP in the use case as there was a possible no text attributes in the data set? Um, I can see that the, I mean, John reason itself opens the opportunity for applying the NLP use case and then um, help me to improve my services. This is what the customer care data, I mean, everywhere where there is a help desk involved, we are doing it. Someone has mentioned that uh, how you have plotted multi-layer by a chart. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll give the pseudo code and then you can have an idea about it. John prediction based on GB boost. Okay, I'm not clear with this. Someone has mentioned categorical model and applying smooth. Okay, some new questions. Yes, reducing the either reducing or increasing the um, size of the data set definitely in, impacts the performance of your model. I think I have done, I'm done with the majority of questions. Thank you so much.